Do you wanna know how to give your child a secure attachment? I'm Nicolene Peck, and I teach all about parenting, good communication, and how to build strong family bonds all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about attachment. <laughs> One of the most basic needs that a person has is feeling attached or that sense of belonging to someone that is first formed in the relationship with their parents. In this video, we're gonna be talking about that bonding, belonging, attachment, and how to nurture more of that, especially when things seem to be a bit difficult. Oftentimes when children are struggling or having difficulties, their attachment with you is also struggling. Oftentimes when a child does things that they know are the opposite of what their parent would do, they start hiding, kind of emotionally hiding on the inside from their parents and this pulls them away from their parents, damaging the bond or attachment. This then makes them feel very alone. And when they get in this place of loneliness, they struggle even more with their behaviors and their bonds to other people. In fact, sometimes some people, if their bond is detached enough from their parents, can end up creating unhealthy bonds with people that could be very damaging in their lives, such as you know people of the opposite sex or friends that might be not good friends because they are looking desperately for that feeling of belonging. One thing that a parent must know is no matter what the child does, we cannot take it personally. We have to offer the belonging, the attachment, the connection, the I am here for you feeling no matter what. Now that doesn't mean we coddle the children or baby them. We absolutely need to do the teaching and correcting that they need to thrive and learn cause and effect so that they can learn proper self-government for their lives and thrive socially, get jobs, have good relationships. But we don't have to do those things in a detached way. People are often surprised when I'm talking about self-government skills and principles, and I start mentioning correcting your children, and I say, you should feel closer to your child during and after a correction than you even did before. People give me a look like, uh, what? I never thought of that before. And that's because so often people think they've done something bad. I need to let them know they've done something bad. And so they start treating them like they're bad and they actually disconnect from them emotionally in a way that can hurt attachment sometimes, at least on the child's side. The parent may feel like the attachment is still fine, but the child may be struggling a little bit with attachment because they felt the parent pull away from them and actually in their heart think of them as bad. Children make mistakes. So that doesn't mean that they're bad people. It just means they made a mistake. That's what childhood is all about, learning and making mistakes and growing, right? So what we need to do is make sure that they know that home is always the safest place to make mistakes and that we are here to help them through all of those mistakes. We won't take those mistakes personally and we are happy to be the person who's there too. No matter what, we need to work on a relationship development with our children. If you feel that your relationship is starting to be detached from your child, then it definitely is a good idea that you do something. Now, if you've subscribed to this channel already, you know I talk a lot about calmness and about the concept of self-government and certain skills that you can teach your children for success. Well, those skills are not just so that the child does what you like, but they're actually so that the child also feels that they are safe communicating with you and being corrected by you too. If the communication and the parenting is really predictable, it decreases the anxiety and gives the child an opportunity to bond despite the correction or teaching that needs to happen. In fact, when you are correcting your children, you should be looking at them with love and understanding, even though you are consistently correcting them and giving them an opportunity to earn a negative consequence, such as an extra chore, which is the perfect negative consequence because work is the antidote for a sick character. It's done quickly, which means quick repentance. They can move on. You don't hang things over their head and they actually have to accept it. If a person's not given the opportunity to accept their own consequence, they can't actually learn self-government. 
So if your child is struggling with a sense of belonging and attachment to you right now, what can you do? I would highly recommend having what I call a parent counseling session. I talk about parent counseling sessions in my course, the TSG Parenting course, which is on my website, teachingselfgovernment.com. The parent counseling session is a 14 step process that you go through with your child in a talk session where you get them to open up and you make a plan with them after you have talked about what the problem is that you see. So if you're seeing a problem with your relationship, you know what, just deliberately talk about it. It's always better to bring things into the light instead of to keep things hidden in the dark. Once you bring something into the light, then you can make a plan for it and the child can feel like you understand. If you leave things hidden, hoping they'll just magically go away, the child will still not feel like you know what's going on. They want you to know what's going on. That's why they're detaching from you probably. That's the sign that something is not okay in the relationship and they don't know how to handle it. You've got to help them out. You have the maturity and hopefully you have the self-government skills too. Some key things that you can do if you're wanting to just cultivate an environment where good attachment exists is make sure that you're present with your children. Have certain times of the day where you do not allow for distractions, no phone calls or other business that happens on technology and devices. Give them some of your time. Work with them, play with them, be present. This type of prioritization of the family will show them how much they mean to you. And you know what? When they need you, be willing to stop anything that you're doing, no matter how important it is. Turn the dinner off, let it wait, let it burn. If it means having the right conversation with your child, it's worth it. Another thing that you can do to help your children have a good attachment with you is to not coddle them. A lot of parents who care so much for their children trend toward coddling. And when a child is coddled, they actually start feeling very alone or isolated because they don't know how to do the same work that their parent is doing. Working together and teaching your child adult skills builds confidence and it builds your attachment and your relationship. There is a wonderful book. I love this book. It's called Understood Betsy. In the book Understood Betsy, you see a young girl who's being raised by her aunts because her parents had died. The aunts raised her to be very, very fragile. They coddled her and overly discussed emotions. Then there came a time where she had to leave and go visit some other family members. She was with them for an entire year. At first, she was very afraid of these family members because these family members knew how to work hard and do all kinds of things that she'd never been allowed to do before. Well, they didn't let that hold them back. They just assumed she could learn to do it. And they started giving her the opportunity to drive the horses, help make the butter, lift something off of the stove, walk to school by herself. They seemed like small things, but they were teaching her that she was capable, that they trusted her. When a child feels trusted by their parents, that actually increases their bond and attachment with you. It's like you're on a project together and the project is the development of the child. So coddling actually shows the child that you don't trust that they are going to develop properly and that's why you have to micromanage everything and do everything for them. This is actually really bad for your attachment because they don't get the opportunity to work on the same project with you or to learn and grow alongside you. So be sure to work with your children. Do real manual labor. In fact, if your family doesn't do a lot of manual labor or work, you may want to let some of the staff go that are cleaning the house and start doing some of it yourself with your children. Start making more of the food instead of going out to eat. Take on projects so that your children learn grit, so that they learn that they're stronger than they think they are, and they learn it right alongside you. This will lead to a lifetime of a loving, memorable relationship. Another thing that you can do is make sure your child knows how you communicate and that you know how they communicate. This means that you as a family put together a system of communication that puts everybody on the same page. Have the same vocabulary for solving your problems. The whole point of this channel is to teach people self-government, which includes the skills and principles of freedom and family communication. Skills like following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences and disagreeing appropriately. If you would like to learn more about those skills,
skills to help increase your attachment and improve your relationships with your children, then you'll probably want to watch my full-length class called The Not-So-Known Secret for Parenting Success. Click on the link to that video now. I'll see you there.